The hemlock woolly adelgid, also known as HWA, is an invasive insect killing eastern and Carolina hemlock trees. As HWA feeds, it causes the tree's needles to drop, resulting in a rapid decline in tree health, which can kill a tree in as little as four years. Widespread mortality of hemlocks caused by HWA has occurred throughout the tree's native range. In this video, we will demonstrate the soil-based application methods that the Hemlock Restoration Initiative utilizes to treat hemlocks for HWA on public lands in North Carolina. These methods are fairly simple to carry out, don't require specialized equipment, and are available to all landowners in the state. This video won't cover all aspects of HWA management, or even all methods of chemical treatment, but we have additional resources on our website that address these topics. We would like to thank the North Carolina Forest Service Urban and Community Forestry Grant Program for making this video possible and hope you find it useful. Before getting started, it's important to make sure you are addressing the correct issue. Refer to the resources on the Info for Landowners page on our website to determine whether your hemlock trees are suffering from an HWA infestation and are likely to respond to chemical treatment. In this video, we will be focusing on HWA, but there are other pests and diseases that can affect hemlocks. If you suspect your tree is suffering from issues other than HWA, consult with another resource, such as your county cooperative extension office, your county forest ranger, or a tree care professional. It is also important to know who is legally allowed to perform pesticide treatments. In North Carolina, all of the products and methods we will cover in this video are allowed for use by private landowners without a pesticide license on their own property or if they are not receiving compensation. If you are applying any pesticide for compensation, you must have or be working under a commercial pesticide applicator's license. Other state and local laws may differ, so be sure to check the laws in your area before applying pesticides. There are several insecticides and application methods available to treat HWA. Two general types of insecticides used are contact insecticides and systemic insecticides. Contact insecticides are sprayed directly on the insect, covering and killing it. Examples include horticultural oils and insecticidal soaps. Systemic insecticides are applied to the tree, usually to the trunk or roots, and are absorbed and distributed to all of the tree tissue. We will be discussing systemic insecticides in this video, but contact insecticides can be effective at controlling HWA and may be useful in certain situations. There are many methods used to apply systemic insecticides to hemlocks, and some are better suited to certain situations than others. These application methods include soil-based ones, such as soil drench, soil injection, and cortec tablets, and trunk-based ones, like basal bark spray and stem injection. In all of these application methods, the insecticide is taken into the tree's vascular tissue and spread to the trunk, branches, and needles, killing the HWA when it feeds on the tree. You may encounter situations on your property where you would prefer to hire a professional rather than do the treatment yourself. We have a list of questions on our website to help you when planning to hire someone for your hemlock treatments. Tree care professionals can also assist you with other hemlock health issues besides hemlock woolly adelgid. First, we will cover some environmental considerations relevant to all soil-based applications. Because the insecticide is being taken up by the tree roots, you must apply it when the tree is moving water from the roots into the crown. Spring and fall are considered the best times for chemical treatment. You can treat other times of the year as well, except when the ground is frozen or in times of drought. You should avoid applying insecticide to soil where the roots of flowering plants are growing, because these plants can take up the chemical and possibly harm pollinators. If the flowering plants can't be removed or their root area avoided, a stem-based application should be used instead. You also cannot apply in saturated soils and shouldn't apply to the soil if more than one inch of rain is expected in the following 24 hours. Additionally, to avoid negative impacts on water quality, HRI recommends you don't use soil-based applications within 10 feet of surface water. Where water or flowering plants are a concern, stem-based applications like basal bark spray and stem injection are appropriate.
This is a selection of the systemic products that can be used for soil applications. The main thing to consider when choosing a product is the active ingredient. These products contain the active ingredient amidacloprid. They will be effective against HWA for multiple years, but can take several months to get into the whole tree. These products contain the active ingredient dinotefurin. They act faster than amidacloprid, but will not be effective for as long, only a year or two. When purchasing any pesticide, it is important to carefully read the label. The label is considered the law, and you must follow any requirement or restriction. Different states have different laws that will be reflected on the label where the pesticide is purchased. The label contains a lot of information. You should read the entire label, but here are some things to look for. The particular pest and setting. Make sure you are buying something labeled for adelgids and for your setting, whether landscaped or forested. The required personal protective equipment, or PPE. Personal safety guidelines and first aid. Per acre limits of the active ingredient. Usually these are annual limits per acre. Be sure if you are using more than one product with the same active ingredient that you don't exceed the total limit. Environmental restrictions, including certain areas, species, or water. Mixing and dosing instructions, and whether those are based on the diameter or circumference of the tree. And finally, storage and disposal of leftover chemicals and containers. It is very important that you use the PPE required by the label. For the products we are demonstrating, the required PPE is a long sleeve shirt or jacket, long pants, shoes and socks, and chemical resistant gloves such as nitrile. We also choose to wear safety glasses. You should wear PPE when handling, mixing, or applying the product, and be sure to remove and wash your clothing afterward. The label will contain mixing and dosing instructions. Most products for soil drench application will need to be mixed with water. The dosing can be based on the diameter of the tree at four and a half feet off the ground, called diameter at breast height, or DVH, or the circumference of the tree at the same height. The mixing and dosing guidelines may give a range of application rates or be confusing. We have simplified mixing and dosing instructions for some emitted clopid products available on our website that fall within the guidelines of the label and are specifically tailored to the size of the tree. When mixing the product, use containers and measuring cups that aren't used for anything else, especially food or herbicide. Label any mixing or storage containers as insecticide. We like these 48 ounce bottles because they have secure lids, measurement markings, and are transparent enough to see the solution. Imidacloprid 2F products are a concentrated liquid that must be mixed with water and can be mixed to a specific amount to reduce leftover solution. Water soluble packet, or WSP products, come in a small sealed pouch that dissolves in water. When using this product, make sure your gloves and the lip of the mixing container are dry and place the whole pouch in the container without opening it. The pouch will dissolve as you shake the container. When using dinotefurin granule products, make sure the granules completely dissolve. The mixture can also get foamy, so you may want to add a defoaming agent to the mixing container. Shake the mixed solution well before each application to ensure no sediment is left at the bottom of the container. Using a transparent container helps with this. If you have any leftover chemical, store it in a secure, dark place because light will cause the active ingredient to break down. Additionally, chemical must be stored in its original container with labels clearly identifying what it is. Dinotefurin should not be stored once it has been mixed with water. Now let's walk through the soil drench process. First, assess the tree to determine if it is healthy enough to treat and what are the appropriate insecticides to use. 
We have resources on our website to guide you in this process. After assessing the tree from a distance, walk up to the trunk and measure the tree. Check your product label to see if the dosing is based on tree height, inches in circumference, or DBH, which stands for diameter at breast height. Wrapping a measuring tape around the trunk, measure the tree four and a half feet off the ground. Special measuring tapes are available that convert the circumference of the tree into diameter. Many products use DBH, so if you don't have a special diameter tape, you can divide the circumference of the tree by 3.14 to get the diameter. Record the diameter of each tree to keep with your treatment records. Two other points about measuring a tree. If the tree is on a slope, measure at 4.5 feet above the base on the high side of the slope. If the trunk splits into two or more distinct trunks below 4.5 feet, then measure each trunk at 4.5 feet off the ground and add the measurements together to use as the total DBH or circumference. However, if your label gives different instructions for multi-trunk trees, follow the label. It can be helpful to mark your trees. There are various methods and systems for marking from a simple dot of paint to metal tags with numbers or dates. Decide what is best for your needs. If you need to treat your trees in two consecutive years, you may want to use a marking that indicates the year, such as different colors. You need to apply the mixed product to bare soil, so before pouring the insecticide, scrape the duff, the leaf litter and debris, away from the base of the tree. Clear the duff in a ring one to two feet out from the base of the tree. This area is where the feeder roots of hemlocks are concentrated, so this is where you should apply the insecticide. Based on the diameter of the tree, refer to your dosing instructions to find out how many ounces of mixed solution to apply. A measuring cup with one ounce gradations is very helpful. Before pouring from your container into the measuring cup, check to make sure the product is still well mixed and hasn't settled to the bottom. Give a quick shake if needed to resuspend the insecticide. Pour the insecticide around the entire tree within that one to two foot zone. Pouring close to the ground helps prevent splashing and splatter. Replace the duff over where you have applied the insecticide. If your tree doesn't have any duff under it, you can move some from the nearby forest floor or use mulch or straw to cover the tree area. In some cases where the tree has declined severely or is heavily infested with HWA, it can be helpful to use a dinotefurin product. Dinotefurin can be applied at the same time as a imidacloprid, or it can be applied one year and imidacloprid can be applied a year or two later. After an initial application of dinotefurin, the tree will likely return to a healthy enough state where only imidacloprid treatments will be necessary. Cortec tablets are another soil application product that can be useful in areas where there isn't good access to water for mixing product or where it might be a burden to carry mixed product in. Cortec is an imidacloprid product but is still under patent making it more expensive than the generic products that can be used for soil drench. It can also be useful if you have many small trees to treat because you can quickly apply a few tablets without the process of measuring liquid product. The insecticide in the tablet is released slowly as moisture is available in the soil, so we don't recommend it for hemlocks that are stressed with heavy HWA infestations or that have already begun to decline. But for treating your trees way back in the woods or up on the high ridge top, it can be a convenient option. The process for measuring and marking the tree is the same as for soil drench. The tablets should be inserted in the same root zone where soil drench is applied, so scrape away the duff in the same way. They should also be inserted into the soil at a depth of two to five inches. Outside of this range, the tablets won't work properly and the chemical won't reach the roots. You can use a number of tools or objects to make your holes. We like a soil auger or a piece of rebar. Again, you wanna make sure the chemical is distributed as evenly as possible around the tree. So try to space your holes all the way around. To minimize miscounting, count out the tablets before putting them in the holes. For small trees, put one tablet in each hole. For larger trees, you can put two or three tablets in a hole if needed, making sure that the tablets are in the 2 to 5 inch range below the surface. 
You can also make concentric rings of holes for larger trees within the area one to two feet from the trunk. After placing the tablets in the hole, fill the holes with soil as you go. Then when all the tablets have been used, you can replace the duff. We saw how Cortect application looks on a larger tree. Now let's see how it looks on a small tree. Notice that for this small tree, we only need one to two tablets. You can quickly make a few holes, pop in the right number of tablets, cover them up, and you're done. Now, let's review the steps of our soil drench treatments. First, assess the tree to determine which products to use. Then, measure and record the diameter or circumference four and a half feet off the ground, measuring from the high side on slopes. Mark the tree. Then, scrape away the duff within one to two feet of the trunk. Be sure your product is well mixed. Apply the appropriate amount of product based on the size of the tree, trying to distribute all the way around the tree if possible. And lastly, replace the duff. It's important to know what to expect from the treatment. Imidacloprid products can take multiple months to become effective, while dinotefurin should work faster. Monitor the low branches of your trees in winter and early spring for signs of HWA. Look at multiple branches on each tree. Abundant new growth in the spring is a good sign that your tree is recovering. It may take a couple years after treatment for this to appear. The branches on your tree that were completely dead will not come back to life, but even branches that were very defoliated yet still alive can fill out with new foliage. You can fertilize a hemlock that has been chemically treated if it is no longer infested with HWA. Do not fertilize a hemlock that is still infested. The fertilizer will just feed the HWA and will be counterproductive for the tree. If you aren't sure whether the treatment worked or if the health of your trees continues to decline, seek additional support before treating again. To review, Make sure you are addressing the correct issue with your hemlocks. You may have an issue besides HWA or multiple issues affecting your trees. When purchasing any pesticide, read and follow the label. Use the correct PPE listed on the label. Make sure you are treating at an appropriate time of year, when the ground isn't frozen, when there's enough soil moisture, and when there won't be more than an inch of rain in the following 24 hours. Avoid environmental risks like flowering plants and surface water. Use a stem-based treatment in cases where a soil-based one is not appropriate. Finally, reach out for additional support if you are unsure about anything. For more information, you can contact HRI and visit our website. The North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service and the North Carolina Forest Service County Rangers can be great resources. You may also wish to consult with or hire a tree care professional to handle some or all of your hemlock treatment. Thank you for watching and thank you for taking action to care for your hemlocks.